Hey, what's up, my guys? It's Al here, and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. Now, I'm really, really, really excited, and honestly, I don't even think I'm going to bother editing this episode just for the sheer fact of what I want to show you. Now, since uh, I forget how long ago, I made the main battle tank, which is this, and it uses a bearing glitch, which basically causes the bearings to freak out and jump at super high speeds, which then propels a projectile allows it to shoot the size of this mechanism however it was massive making it a really big tank now with pistons introduced in the game i'd been trying to make a compact yet powerful piston cannon i had not been successful for the longest time even to the point that i even gave up with using pistons in a cannon design however earlier today i said screw it let's see what i can do and i tried it again and I'm proud to present the main battle tank, Mark II. It's so tiny, yet it makes the main battle tank, this one, look like trash in every aspect. It might have just a tad bit less power, but it makes up for it in every other single way. So let's actually just go ahead and get into this. It looks really nice in my opinion. It's really small, really compact, and if you just compare it to the Mark I, it's about half the size. So let's just uh, drive it out here and give it a little bit of a test run. You're not going to be disappointed, I'm going to tell you that much. Alright, All right, here's a good idea. Good spot, because I have a target. I want to hit that pink tree. So what I can do is give myself just a general lineup. I hit four, and a sight pops out, and I can use this to get a more accurate lineup. And then I can actually jump up and use this sight to zero in my gun. Right. So what I'm doing here is the green line is my up and down. That's what I'm using mostly to aim. Now you see that gray block, that one in the background? I'm lining it up with the bottom line and making sure it's even on both sides and that gives me a really, really good estimate of where it's gonna hit. Now you also have to take into account the fact that the actual barrel of the gun is a few blocks over from the crosshair. You do have to aim slightly to the right of where the actual crosshair is pointing. Right about there seems good. Go ahead and put up the crosshair. Load the round. Get us some. Oh shit! I hit the wrong button. Now we just have to aim back up. Great. Uh, it's a bit off. Right there is likely to hit. If not, it'll be very close. Now what I was supposed to do is I was supposed to give it some elevation. Uh, that's flat. Right about there, maybe? This is hop in the seat. Press 3. And hope I hit. Oh, it's lined up, but it was a bit short. Let's give it a bit more elevation. Get in. Hit 3. Boom. Hit the tree. Second shot. Yes. It is that accurate. You can hit that small of a tree from this distance with pinpoint accuracy no questions asked well it can have dud shots which kind of like just shoot off into space somewhere but a good three or four out of five are always accurate like it's not even funny I don't know how I did this, but I did, and I'm so I'm, I'm trying not to cuss at the moment. I don't know why, but I'm so happy. Like, uh, just a quick run through the controls because I know I didn't tell them very well because I just wanted to get shooting in this thing. Uh, up here, just on your control panel, this is so if you want to aim your gun and shoot your gun completely outside the seat, you can. In my opinion, the seat actually grants a bit more uh, accuracy. For some reason, when your character's on top of the vehicle, it causes the physics to be a little bit different. 
which can be a bit inconsistent. So green are turning and aiming, they aim up. And then blue is elevation. And red is fire. Now as you can see, you can see the firing pin just run through there. And if you press this little button, you can get the side up as well. Now the seat works full W, A, S, and D controls. One raises cannon, two lowers cannon, three fires cannon, four raises the sight. Pretty easy controls. Let's uh, go for a bit more testing. Just a bit more. Because I want to hit that tower from about here. So you can get a rough estimate of that distance. I should be able to hit that, no problem. Let's go ahead and do that, get it prepped. And that's way to the right. Close, but just a tad bit left. Close, just a tad bit more. And I should be able to hit that. Now raise the gun. Get in the seat. Oh, it would help if I dislodge the bullet. There we go. Bullet's loaded. Fire. Oh, that was a dud. That's what I was talking about. Duds will sometimes happen. Just because of the game's engine. Ah, uh, it hit right at the base. It's really hard to see, but it hit right at the base. So I just have to aim the gun just a little bit higher. I should strike the tower this time. Ooh, am I out of range? I might be out of range. Oh, that was a dud. That was a dud as well. I think it was because the cannon was hitting, it was at its max height, which is causing some issues. So if I just drive forward a little bit, just a little bit, it might targeting system back out my site and line up once again that should be a good direct hit fire dud now the more bullets you put onto a world the more likely you are to get a dud so if you spawn it in you're that was went off the space. Now, if you spawn it in, the first, say, 10 or so rounds are more than likely to hit every single time. But the more shots you shoot, the more the world doesn't know what to do, and it causes more duds to occur. Come on. There we go. Good shot. Hit. It hit just above the first red. Yes. Oh, dud. Dud. I'm trying to show off this gun's accuracy and it keeps going crazy with the physics. Come on, physics, keep with me. I know I hit it, but I do want to hit it again. Do that, see if that helps fix something. Nope. There we go, good shot, good shot. Did I pass the tower? Maybe I passed the tower. Damn it. Let's uh, realign our site because it can get a bit off at times. No, it looks like uh, maybe just a tad to the right. Should be fine. Uh, 
that was a bit short. That was way short. Hit. Uh, once again, right above the red line. That, unfortunately, is probably going to be the end of the episode. I don't even want to edit this because I really want to get this up straight away. I'm so happy. This is going to be on the workshop as soon as I can. It blows my mind that I was able to get a gun just as powerful, maybe a little bit less powerful than the old gun in such a small size with such accuracy. Like, the old Mark I had a sight, but it was just a judge, judge your own kind of, as very, you, you basically had to go with your instincts. Use the sight to help a little bit, but that was about all it could do. This one, you can almost completely rely on the sight, other than elevation, which you do have to judge your own, but once you get it lined up on the tower, you should be able to just put a round in, judge the elevation to a decent extent, and uh, fire, and hope that it doesn't just go off into some random direction, like those two. Come on, I know you can do it. Please, one more time. I'm asking nicely. You're making me look bad. Yes. Oh, that was a bit off the right. Anyway, this is going to be in the episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please leave a like. Any suggestions for future episodes, please leave them in the comments down below. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around. And until next time, peace.